When it comes to trading, we can say a trader or a hedge fund is good or not if it's beating the market or not. But what's actually the market? We can represent the market by S&P 500, which contains Fortune 500 companies, and it averages 10% per year. So whatever strategy you're using, either day trading, swing trading, or anything, if you're not doing 10% per year, it's better that you don't trade and you just put your money in S&P 500. So in this video, I'm going to explain you a very simple swing trading strategy, which I kind of guarantee you that you can beat the market. So here's what we said. We have S&P 500, which averaged 10% per year, and it contains the Fortune 500 companies, which are 500 stocks. And those stocks are divided into sectors. Each stock has a sector. For example, we have the tech sector, we have the healthcare, we have the financial sector and the energy. There's many other sectors too. And our job here will be is to filter out sectors which are underperforming. Here's exactly what I mean. Here we have the tech sector which is uptrending and the healthcare. If we take the average, we can say for example on a 2-3 months time frame, it averaged 5%. But if you reduced your tech positions at the top and you bought more healthcare at the dip, instead of making 5% in average, you could make around 7%. Now you kind of understand how the strategy works, but it's not that simple. I use many professional scanners like Trade Ideas to find those stocks. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to find those stocks using free scanners. The two softwares that we're going to use is a simple charting software like TradingView that I use and we need to use Finviz, the S&P 500 map. And of course you need some technical analysis skills which I have a lot of videos on it and of course some logic. And now let's get into the strategy. When we're trading stocks we always need to check what's happening fundamentally in the market. For example, during March 2020 the market crashed because of Covid. By the end of October 2020, there was the elections and when there's uncertainty in the market, usually the stock market drops. And another example is at the beginning of March 2021, interest rates were going higher and growth stocks start dropping hard, like stocks like Tesla for example. At the same time, good value stocks and even good healthcare stocks like Pfizer were stable and even going up and at the same time, SPY was dropping few percent. So I guess you kind of understand the logic when interest rate going higher because growth stocks loan more money, they will pay more interest on them. That's why they were dropping more. So the first thing that we need to take into consideration is what's happening fundamentally in the market. And if there's serious catalyst on the market, we can either buy a put, buy UVXY, which measures fear in the market, when usually when market drops, UVXY goes up. For example, during March 2020, UVXY popped more than 1000%. So COVID was a clear catalyst that market will drop and you could make good money out of it. So if you went heavy into UVXY, you could make more than 1000%. So if you invested around 10K, you could make easily $100,000 from that trade. And if there's no serious catalyst, usually the market will go up. And that's why the market is always bullish. So all our positions will be long, except when there's a serious catalyst, we can short SPY just to hedge our positions. And finally, let's get into the strategy and some rules. Rule number one, never risk more than 1% of your trading account per trade. What I mean by never risk more than 1% is that your maximum loss should not be more than 1% of your trading account. You can use risk management bot in my chat room to manage your risk. You can set your entry and stop loss and how much you want to lose on that trade. And the bot will answer you how many shares to get in for a maximum loss of X amount. Rule number two, never buy a stock when it's in green. You should always buy a stock when it's dropping. Rule number three, if you're gambling, you have a very high chance to lose. And if you're too emotional on a trade, it means that you're over risking. And rule number four, spread your risk. Usually my portfolio will contain more than 10 stocks. So it means I'm diversifying my risk into many stocks. I'm not all in into one stock. 
So with this strategy, we're going to have at least 10 to 20 stocks in our portfolio and actively remove the one that we reached our target and get into a new one. So we need to actively switch between stocks. If you remember from my second rule, you should always buy a stock when it's in red. So you should actually buy stocks on red days. You can check the one day performance of the stocks and start searching which one you should start to buy. The second step is some technical analysis. The technical analysis on the stocks is from, you can either watch my large cap swing trading strategy video. I can set a link in the description, but I'll explain the strategy very quickly again. So you actually need to buy stocks when are in red. So one day performance are red. You can see Microsoft, TXN, this kind of stocks are red. So you should be interested to buy those stocks. The second thing is you can check the one week performance of the stocks, one week or one month, and check which ones are performing bad compared to others. And you can go on a higher time frame, like one month performance, you can see Intel, LLY, Nike are red. So you should be interested more into these stocks. So after checking the general performance of the market, which sectors are performing good or bad, you should start buying. And so by checking the one week performance of the stocks, we should be interested in Tesla, Intel, TXN, Microsoft, and some stocks in the healthcare sector. Now let's get into the strategy. Which kind of stocks you need to get in? The strategy that I'm going to explain right now, I had 100% win rate last few months. You can check all my trades here uh, with entry and stop loss with profit taking area. I almost had 100% win rate with those stocks. And now I'm going to explain you the strategy. All these examples are from my buy alerts. So the strategy is very simple. The first pattern that we're going to trade on is on good stocks that are moving in a channel and we're going to buy at the low of the channel. We need the stochastic RSI and the marker indicator to be oversold and if they are, that's a great buying opportunity. For example, we bought MMM at this green zone and I sold whenever it reached this my second target and that's around 13% profit. Here's another example on HAS. The stock is in a channel and we bought the low of the channel and I sold whenever it reached my target. You can see this trade for example, it was an 8% winner. Another example is on PLD. The stock is in a channel, we bought the low of the channel and I sell whenever it reached my target. With the same exact pattern, the stock is in a channel, stochastic RSI and the market indicator oversold. If they meet all these criteria, I buy. Now you're going to ask, how do I set my stop loss and my target range? For stop loss, I don't set any stop loss because in general we're trading good companies and those companies, if they drop even more, it means that you have a better buying opportunity. So why cut losses right there? So that's why I don't uh, cut losses. And of course, it's because we're diversifying risk. We're not putting all our money into one stock. So we're not exposed a lot on each stock. And for the target range, I usually set my target range around mid and high of the channel. For example, MMM, my target range were around mid to the high of the channel. Same thing on all the stocks that I traded on. You can check all my buying alerts videos on YouTube. All the trades worked with the same pattern and you can see my target range. Why I set a stop loss here? I just use that as a reference for my risk management because each stock has a different volatility. I can set the, the stop loss on the chart and based on that, I can get in with a specific amount using my risk bot. A better pattern will be if a good stock is oversold on a weekly time frame. You can see for example Walmart on a weekly time frame, it was oversold. We bought at the low of the channel and market target range is clear. The second pattern that I'm trading on is catching momentum using 200 moving average. Here's some examples. For example Tesla dropped around 35% from highs and this was a great buying opportunity for me. 
I bought Tesla when it was close to 200 moving average. I bought exactly at the dip, which was around $540, and I sold at my target range. Another example that I'm still in, it's plug and CCIV. I tried to catch momentum on 200 moving average and tried to ride the trend. And of course, all the stocks are on a daily time frame. If you remember in the beginning of the video, I gave you an example on when SPY was dropping here, tech stocks were falling hard, but there was other sectors that they were not dropping. When it was falling, I was in the healthcare and consumer sector like PFE, and they were not dropping hard, only tech stocks were dropping, and I did not have any tech stock. I'm going to compare you guys the chart on Pfizer and SPY. You can see at this exact drop, PFE was going up. And when it went up, I reduced my position in PFE and I went heavy into tech stocks. And when I went heavy into tech stocks, I made more profit than SPY. And in addition to all of this, I had SPY short at this point. I did send my portfolio return this month. When SPY started to drop, I was almost break even because I had some positions and I had SPY short. And at this point, all my positions that I were in from the healthcare sectors and, and, and I bought tech stocks at the dip, instead of making few percent here, I made 7 to 8 percent on my portfolio. I hope this was educational. I tried to explain the strategy in a very simple way and a good way to find the stocks to trade on. So hope you learned something new. See you in the next video.